vegetable parade. There was a lot of excitement at Mary Brook village. Farmer Jose had invited all the children to spend a day at his farm. The first Sunday in December was eagerly marked on their calendars. None of them wanted to miss this outing for anything. 4th December finally arrived. The day was bright and sunny. The air was fresh and a gentle breeze was blowing. It was a perfect day to spend outdoors. Children started arriving at the farm from 8 o'clock onwards. Some came on their cycles, some came walking and those who lived far away were dropped there by their parents. After a healthy breakfast of sandwiches and cereal with honey, they began a tour of the farm. They visited the barn and the older children even got to ride the horses while the younger ones petted the ponies and made friends with them. They visited the sheep and goats in their pen and were excited to see the woolly sheep gambling. They also visited the chickens and hens in the coop and the ducks in the pond. They had a picnic lunch beside the pond. Farmer Jose then led them up an old wooden bridge and down to the other side of the pond. This is where his vegetable garden was. The vegetables had prepared a special show for the children. They had spruced themselves up and rehearsed their lines over and over again. Their master Gardner Green had erected a stage. As the children settled down, Mr. Green came on stage, introduced himself, then came and sat down with the children and Farmer Jose. Pompous Potato was the first to come on stage. I am Mr. Potato, your favorite vegetable. Every day you have me in some form or the other. You can eat me with my skin. It is full of nutrients. But be careful. Don't eat too much of me or you will become fat. Tomato came next. I am tomato. The main ingredient of ketchup. See how nice and red I am? I add taste and color to the food. If you eat me, your cheeks will become a healthy red. I am good for your bones and blood. Hi, I am spinach. See how green and fresh I am. Popeye made himself super strong by eating me. I am full of minerals and vitamins. Very good for your blood, eyes and brain. Hello, I am carrot. Mostly orange, sometimes red. I am very, very good for your eyes and teeth. You can have me raw in salads or cooked. I grow downwards into the earth. You can just pull me out from the ground, wash the mud off me and eat me. Hi, I am cauliflower. I am mostly white in color. I am made of many tiny flower buds. You must wash me well before cooking and don't eat me raw. I help in building healthy bones. 
Hi, I am Leafy Cabbage. I can be eaten raw or cooked. I am very friendly. You can mix me with any dish you want. I protect you from many diseases, even common cold. Hello, can you see me? I am peas. I grow in lovely green pods and stay fresh and clean inside. Just split the pod and have me. I am very sweet when eaten fresh. Hello everybody. I am Brinjal, said a gruff voice. I come in many different sizes. From very small to very big. I come in a variety of colors too. I am very good for your blood. Never eat me raw. All the vegetables hold hands and sing a little song. Then take a bow and troop out of the stage as the children clap. Thirty happy faces thanked Farmer Jose for giving them such a lovely day. As they walked back to the gate, they had already decided to eat all the vegetables their mother prepared for them. Anuj becomes a good boy. Uncle Rao was an old man. He used to sleep in the afternoons. One day, while he was sleeping, the doorbell rang. Uncle Rao did not get up from his bed. He knew that Anuj and his friends were ringing the bell to disturb him. Though he was not feeling well, old Uncle Rao could not rest. Anuj and his friends were feeling very happy. They had spent the whole day ringing doorbells of all the old people in their building. It was fun ringing the bell and then waiting for the old people to come slowly to the door. Before the door could be opened, the children would run down the staircase, holding their breath. Uncle Rao stayed alone on the fourth floor, while Anuj and his parents stayed on the fifth floor of the same building. That same evening, Anuj was alone at home. His parents had gone to a party. He decided to watch TV in his parents' room. As soon as he stretched his hand to switch on the lights, he heard some whispering. Anuj got very scared. He ran out of the house. He ran down the steps. He needed help. He could only think of Uncle Rao. He banged Uncle Rao's door loudly. Tears were streaming down his face. He thought that Uncle Rao would not open the door. But the door opened. And Uncle asked him, What happened, Anuj? Why are you crying? Between sobs and hiccups, Anuj told him about the strange sounds in his house. Uncle Rao held Anuj's hand and told him not to cry. He then called some other people and together they went to Anuj's house. 
they caught two thieves in the house and handed them over to the police. Anuj felt very bad. He had spent the whole day troubling the sick old man. But that same man had saved him and his house from the thieves. He said sorry to Uncle Rao and promised never to ring doorbells to disturb anybody. And Anuj made sure that his friends also never rang doorbells to disturb anybody. Susan's Birthday Susan knew exactly what she wanted for her birthday. Exactly. Daddy, she said, I know what I want for my birthday. And what is that? asked her father. I'd like to have our family go somewhere together, she said. Where? asked her brother Steve. Let me think. Susan got excited. Remember the last time Grandma came to visit us? She took us to the aquarium. What fun we had. I miss Grandma. How I wish she could be here with us. I think it is a good idea to go somewhere on your birthday, their father said. Make up your mind about where you want to go, Susan. Susan thought about it. I wouldn't mind going to the aquarium again, she said. I think a new place would be better, Steve said. Maybe, Susan replied. She thought again. I think I'd like all of us to go to the airport, she told her father. That's a great idea, father replied. All of us would like that. Finally, 6th of September came, the day Susan had been waiting for. Her whole family went to the airport. Susan watched the people who were waiting to board the planes. They were all busy getting their bags checked. A voice on the public address was announcing about planes that were departing and arriving. But no one seemed to be listening. There were machines for everything. Susan had popcorn out of one machine. Steve had peanuts out of another. Her parents had tea out of a machine that made tea. Susan had never seen so many machines in one place before. Susan looked out of a big glass window. People were getting off a plane. There's Grandma, she said excitedly. Surprised? Steve replied. We knew that Grandma was coming. It was a surprise for your birthday. And you happened to choose the right place to go. I am so happy, Susan said, as she gave her Grandma a hug. I just couldn't stay away on your birthday. I had to get here in time to see you blow out the candles on your birthday cake. Grandma smiled. Today, when I blow out the candles, Grandma, I won't even have to make a wish. You are. Her voice trailed off. Peter gets his hair cut. Peter William's hair had grown really long. 
He badly needed to have his hair cut. Now, take this money and get your hair cut. His father said, If you hurry back home, I will take you and Anna for the cricket match today. Peter got excited. He decided to hurry. He wanted to go and watch the cricket match that day. Peter got onto his bicycle and ringing his bell merrily. He started off for the barber's shop. Bruno, the neighbor's dog, saw Peter getting onto his bicycle. He decided to follow Peter. Peter parked his bicycle outside the barber's shop. Bruno began to push into the shop ahead of Peter. You stay outside, Peter ordered Bruno. He went inside and sat down awaiting his turn. There were four people ahead of him. Peter could see Bruno through the window. Bruno was looking for another way to get inside the barber's shop. He went to the shoe shop next door. A few moments later, Bruno came running out of the shop. A man was chasing him. The man looked very angry. He opened the door of the barber's shop and asked, Where did that big dog come from? Everyone looked at Peter. He's not my dog, Peter said. Well, that dog jumped in through the window and walked all over my shoes. He was angry. Then, he banged the door loudly and went back to his shop. Bruno lay down on the pavement just in front of the barber's shop. Three men came to have their hair cut, but Bruno barked at them. The barber looked at Peter. Child, isn't that your dog? Peter looked down at his shoes and said, No, he just followed me. He lives next to my house. Well, the barber said, That dog is keeping people out of my shop. There are people waiting ahead of you. But I'll cut your hair first. I don't want that dog around here. Get up on the chair. Hurry! Peter got onto the chair and the barber started to work. Peter's hair fell everywhere. No one had ever cut his hair in such a hurry before. Soon it was over. The barber lowered the chair and Peter got down. He paid the barber and went outside. He climbed onto his bicycle and rode home as fast as he could. Bruno ran ahead of him. Anna was standing near the gate. Dad is waiting for us inside, she said. Dad looked at Peter's hair and nodded his head. It looks fine, he said. Good, you didn't take too long. See what you can do when you decide to hurry. Now, have your bath and get ready. Then, we will go to the stadium. How did you manage to get your hair cut so quickly? Anna asked her brother. Ask Bruno, replied Peter as he shut the bathroom door. At the stadium, Anna sat on one side of Mr. Williams and Peter sat on the other side. The 
wind felt cool on the back of Peter's neck. Curious Squeaky Come, get into your bed, Squeaky, said Mrs. Squirrel. But I am not sleepy yet, said Squeaky. Get into bed and soon you will be fast asleep. Can I go out and play, please? For a little while only. Then I will come back in and sleep. Stop being silly. Winter's here and we need to go to sleep. No squirrel goes out in winter. But I want to know what winter's like. Squeaky was getting very stubborn. Mama just picked him up by his neck, put him into his bed and sat there watching him. When she felt sure that he had gone to sleep, she scampered quickly into her own bed beside Mr. Squirrel and soon both of them were snoring loudly. Squeaky was restless. When he heard his parents snoring, he quietly left his warm bed of leaves and twigs and quickly left their burrow to experience winter. As he came out into the open, he shivered a little. A cold wind was blowing and there was snow on the ground. He decided to skate on the snow. Oh, what fun! He squealed in delight. Polly the parrot saw him. Squeaky, what are you doing in the snow? You should be in your burrow. No, I came out to see what winter is like. Even you are out. See Squeaky, I can fly off to my home if I feel very cold and reach my nest quickly. Can you fly? No said Squeaky arrogantly and moved ahead. Then he met Whiskers the tabby cat. Meow! Squeaky! Meow! What are you doing out in the cold? Go back to your burrow, quick! No! I want to live out in the cold. Don't be silly, Squeaky. Squirrels don't live out in the snow. You will not be able to live even for two days. Please go home. No! Squeaky was adamant. Whiskers ran away from Squeaky, then ran back to him and said, What if it starts to snow? Can you run to your burrow like I can run? No! thought Squeaky to himself, but went ahead. Then he met Buster the dog. He was running round and round in circles to keep himself warm. Hello! Who's that? Squeaky, is that you? Yes, Squeaky answered, not so boldly now. Go home to your burrow, baby. You will freeze in this cold. Squirrels are meant to sleep through winter. Yes, B -B -B Buster, sir. I just wanted to see what winter was like. He stammered, I will go home later. But how will you keep yourself warm? Can you run around in circles like I am doing? No, said Squeaky as he thought of returning home. But not the way he'd come. He had started feeling hungry. He decided to go home after visiting the pond. He used to get a lot of berries and nuts there throughout the summer. But to his surprise, the pond had almost frozen. There was snow on the ground. He was disappointed. Then Mrs. Lucky the duck spotted him. She came to him and said gently, Squeaky, what's wrong with you? Why are you alone? Where are your parents? Squeaky thought of his warm burrow and his parents snoring happily and he began to cry. Mrs. Lucky scolded him and told him to rush home. But I'm hungry. There's so much snow on the ground. You don't have a beak like me to break the ice, do you? 
Where will you find food now? Go back to your burrow. Quick, scamper as fast as you can. Squeaky came home, but the hole to his burrow had got covered with snow. He used his tiny claws to make a hole just big enough to slide in. Mrs. and Mr. Squirrel had woken up by the noise. Squeaky, is that you? Where were you? Did you go out? But before they could come out of their warm beds to check, Squeaky had snuggled into his warm, cozy bed of leaves and twigs, and was soon fast asleep. The water in the well. One day, Emperor Akbar was taking a walk by the river in his kingdom. His most intelligent minister Birbal was with him. A cool wind was blowing, and they were both very relaxed and happy. Birbal was entertaining Akbar with interesting stories. Just then, a farmer and his neighbor came up to them with a complaint. The farmer fell at Akbar's feet and said, "Your Majesty, I bought a well from this man, and now he wants me to pay for the water." "That is right, Your Highness," said the neighbor. "I sold him the well, not the water in it." The emperor. Was confused. He asked Birbal to settle the fight between them. Birbal was quiet for some time. Then he spoke to the neighbor. I understand that you have sold this well to the farmer, so the well now belongs to him. That is right, sir," answered the neighbor. Birbal continued, but. You have kept your water in his well. So either you pay him rent for that water, or you take it out at once. The neighbor realized that he could no longer fool the farmer. He hung his head in shame and went away. The farmer thanked Birbal for solving the problem so easily. The ant and the dove. A little ant was moving on the grassy bank of a quiet stream. It was a hot day, and the ant had been working very hard collecting food. Now she was thirsty. How clear and cool the water looks! She said to herself. I'll lean over carefully and take a little sip. But the ant was very tiny, and the stream was so big. It fell into the water and got carried away deeper into the stream. Help! Help! How deep the water is! How quickly it moves! My, my! I'll drown. Is there no one who can help me? She shouted. A dove was sitting on a tree near the stream. She heard the ants cry for help. She plucked a leaf from the tree and flew to where the ant was. She dropped the leaf near the ant. The ant climbed on the leaf and floated safely back to dry land. Thank you so much, dear dove, for saving my life today. I will never forget what you have done for me. Maybe, just maybe, I will be able to help you some day. A few weeks later. 
The ant was resting near the tree where the dove had built a nest. There were three eggs in the nest. The dove was warming the eggs and sounded very happy. A hunter was passing through the forest. He heard the dove singing happily. He decided to catch her. He began spreading a net. Here's my chance to help my friend, said the ant to herself. I must save her and her babies who have still not come out of their eggs. Before the hunter could throw the net on the dove's nest, the ant bit him very hard on his foot. Ouch! The man shouted, holding his foot. Ouch! What was that? Hearing his voice, the dove looked up from her nest. She saw the net and immediately flew away. The hunter had not seen the nest. He went away. The ant was very happy. She thought to herself, Even a tiny thing like me could help save someone's life. The ant and the dove continued to live happily as friends. The Fox and the Partridge I'm hungry, said a greedy little fox, licking his lips. I hope I can get something really big today. Saying this, he trotted off to the woods to find himself a nice big supper. Soon he saw a fat partridge sitting on the top of a bush. He did not want to frighten her away. So he sat down beside the bush and spoke softly to her. What a beautiful bird you are! Your feathers are glowing in the sun. I have never seen a bird more beautiful than you. The partridge was pleased to hear this. She began to preen her feathers in the sun. How beautiful! The fox said, Look at the purple, the blue and the green feathers. Wow! I wish I could see you when you sleep. I think you will look even more beautiful when you are sleeping. The partridge closed her eyes. Bounce! The fox had her in his jaws. Oh! The partridge said in a thin voice, Mr. Fox! Please tell me one more time how beautiful I am. Tell me once more how my feathers glow in the sun. Then kill me for your supper. The fox spoke. You are... The partridge flew away. She perched herself on the highest branch of a guava tree. The fox looked up at her. Now why did I open my mouth? He asked himself angrily. And why did I shut my eyes? The partridge asked herself. The hungry little fox went on his way further into the woods looking for his supper. Chotu's Journey 
One day, a baby elephant was born in a forest. He was really tiny. His mother Rani named him Chotu. Chotu was very small. All his brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts took good care of him. They all made sure that he was never left alone. However, one day he got lost. His family was going to the river to have a mud bath and drink water. The river was very far. They had to cross many small brooks and thick clusters of trees to reach the river. Chotu felt hungry. He stopped to eat grass. And when he had eaten his fill, he looked up. He could not see anyone. He walked left, he walked right, he went round and round the grassland. But he could not see his family. Chotu started to cry. Two campers saw him. They felt sorry for Chotu. They gently guided him to their camp. Chotu followed them everywhere. He became their pet. But they could not keep Chotu with them forever. They did not want to leave him alone in the forest also. Thus began his long journey to the zoo. Chotu was led into a big truck. He was scared. He had never seen anything like this before. One camper sat in the back with him. After many hours on the road, the truck stopped and Chotu was happy to walk on the ground again. But the next morning, he was again led into a boat, a very big boat. And before he could walk out, the boat's engine started with a loud roar. Poor Chotu. He was very uncomfortable. He could only see water all around him. He was in the boat for two days and two nights. He did not eat anything. He spent most of his time sleeping. On the third morning, Chotu could see land. He was happy. The boat reached land. Chotu was gently led off the boat and again put on a truck. There was a lot of noise in this place. Chotu did not like the noise. After a little while, the truck stopped at an animal park. Chotu was happy to see grass and trees again. Chotu knew this was his new home. He knew he had travelled far from his family. He had a very nice keeper at the park. Chotu is no longer Chotu now. Many children come to visit him. He is busy from morning to night to entertain them. The Tell Tale Nails A Tenali Raman Story It was well known that King Krishnadevaraya was fond of birds and animals. He had many beautiful and rare birds and animals in his palace. One day, a visitor came to the court 
with a strange looking bird in a cage. Bowing low before the king, he said, Your Majesty, I caught this strange but beautiful bird in the forest yesterday. It can sing sweetly like a cuckoo and can also talk like a parrot. It is not just as colorful as the peacock, but it can dance like one too. I have come to sell this bird to you. The king saw the colorful bird and said, Yes, this bird does look rare. It is also quite beautiful. I'll keep it. He ordered the court treasurer to give the visitor 50 gold coins and put the cage in the palace garden. Just then, Tenali Raman got up and bowing before the king said, Your Majesty, I am sorry to disturb you, but I don't think this bird can dance like a peacock in the rain. If you will let me, I would like to prove it to you. The king was confused. He nodded his head, allowing Tenali Raman to prove his point. Tenali Raman picked up a big jug of water and poured it on the bird in the cage. Coloured water started flowing off the bird's body. Everyone in the court was surprised. Tenali Raman continued to pour the water on the bird. The rare and colourful bird turned into an ordinary light brown pigeon. The king was very surprised. Looking first at the bird and then at Tenali, he asked, How did you realise that this bird had been dyed in false colours? From the visitor's nails, your majesty. The colours he used on the bird are still present on his nails and fingers. The visitor tried to run away, but the palace guards caught him and put him in prison. And the 50 gold coins? Who do you think got those as a reward?